Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back to Behind the Reel. I'm your host, John, and today we've got another electronics video. This time we're talking about Garmin. Today we're gonna look at the 93SV versus the 1022. We're gonna go over the major differences between all of the different offerings that you can find in both of these models. Let's go ahead and break down the 93SV first. So the first one that I wanna talk about is the 93SV UHD. And right now you can find this unit packaged with the GT54, which is their first high definition transducer technology. It is a great transducer, but they've come out with a newer one since. You can find this one right now for like 700 bucks. I know you can go over to russellmarineproducts.com right now and get it for 699.99, shipped to your front door. So for 700 bucks, this is not a bad deal. But basically what you're going to get out of the 93SV is you're going to get an 800 by 480 pixel count unit. That is gonna be pretty standard in all of the other comparable units out there, like the Elite FS units. It's gonna come in a little bit lower than the Helix units are, but it's gonna be right in line with what you're gonna to expect to get in that price point. This unit comes preloaded with the Lakeview G3 mapping package, which is gonna give you one foot contours. It's going to allow you some really cool shading options it's going to help with map study. You're going to be able to take and highlight different depth zones and really customize this to your liking. The Lakeview G3 mapping package is pretty good and I would say kind of right in line with the industry standard. I really feel like it deserves to be in that same conversation as like the Lake Master and the C map from Lawrence. Definitely going to get some good value out of the mapping. This is a touchscreen unit. One really cool thing about this unit is that it has a quick release cradle. So on the back of the unit, it's got a an electrical connection kind of like what you would see on like an old school stereo faceplate the ones that you could just quickly detach and take with you you wouldn't have to worry about somebody stealing it this is kind of the same theory so if you have your cradle still remaining on the boat that's where all of your connections are going to go into and then your unit snaps in place and it will make an electrical connection once you snap it in that cradle you've got your power your ethernet your transducer cables all connected back into the cradle. So one really cool thing about that is that you can just pop that unit off, take it with you. You don't really have to worry about the cradle because it's not gonna do anybody a whole lot of good. And I guess if somebody does steal it, it's not incredibly expensive to replace. So this is a really cool option that you have with the Garmin Echo Map units. Now the UHD model has a snap in place. It doesn't have a locking mechanism like you will see on like the Echo Map Ultras. So this is kind of a plus, but also a minus because you've heard of people having those things kind of bounce out of the cradle from time to time. A lot of that could be user error, but you know, some of it could just be that you're fishing in really rough conditions. And if you hit a big enough wave, you may get that thing to pop out of place. I've never personally seen it, but I have heard of people doing it. Another benefit with this unit is the Active Captain app. And this is a really cool option that you have with just about any higher end Garmin unit out there. And you're gonna be able to do updates. You're gonna be able to look at your mapping. You're gonna be able to go and download different regions on your mapping. Really cool option that you have to update all of your units at once, as long as they're all networked together. So you have some really cool options with the Active Captain app from Garmin. And this UHD model is gonna be supported by this app. So that is something that you can definitely take advantage of. And for the last few years, I've been saying that this was the best app out there between all of the major brands. I think Humminbird is really taking a stab at it with the One Boat Network app. But as far as I'm concerned, Garmin still takes the cake with the best app out there. I highly recommend the Active Captain app. If you are a Garmin user, go download that thing right now if you haven't already. Another really big benefit to this unit, and this is probably the one that a lot of people are getting into this model for, and that's for LiveScope. If you are just looking at getting into a budget-friendly unit for LiveScope, whether it's the LVS32 or the LVS34, the 93SV UHD model is gonna be able to support that. It's not gonna give you the highest resolution screen on the market, but for 700 bucks, it is a steal. You're getting the GT54 in that price point as well, so you're gonna be able to utilize that or maybe sell it to a buddy. This thing at 700 bucks is really hard to beat. 
You're gonna be able to run LiveScope. You're gonna be able to use it for 2D down side imaging. It has some really good preloaded mapping. It's supported by the Active Captain app. And you also have the ability to upgrade to the GT56 transducer. If you buy the unit packaged with that transducer, it's gonna cost you a little bit more, but maybe you're just trying to get in at a real low price point for now, maybe to make room for that LiveScope purchase or whatever the case may be, you can always upgrade to the GT56 transducer later on to get a much crisper side and down image you're gonna also see an extended range with that transducer so it's really a great option to have that capability later on down the line in case you want to take advantage now instead of diving deep into the exact same model that's packaged with the GT 56 just know that you can get this unit with the GT 56 but I'm gonna suggest that if you are not gonna go with the UHD model with the GT 54 you probably just skip over the UHD model altogether and check out the UHD 2. There is going to be some pretty big differences between the UHD and the UHD 2. One of them is going to be that when you get it with the transducer it's going to have that GT56 but the biggest difference in my opinion is the screen resolution. We go from 800 by 480 clear up to 1024 by 600 pixels. That's what you're gonna get out of the UHD2. This is gonna be comparable to like the Helix units and the UHD2 model is gonna come in at a much lower price point. You can get into the UHD2 93 SV for 1200 bucks with their latest and greatest side imaging transducer, the GT56. So you're gonna be able to take advantage of their best side imaging transducer, a higher resolution screen, and you also get an improved locking mechanism on that cradle. So kind of like how we talked about the cradle on the UHD model being just a pop-in option, this one is going to have a locking lever. You're gonna have to pull that in, flip it up, and then you'll be able to pull that unit out of the cradle, and you'll be able to make sure that you get that thing locked in place before you actually hit the water. This is definitely a big benefit over the UHD, and if you're looking at getting a higher resolution screen, taking advantage of the GT56, and you want that improved locking cradle. Another benefit on the UHD2 model is the wireless networking capabilities. This is going to allow you to wirelessly communicate sonar information from one UHD2 unit to another. So at this point in time, the wireless networking capabilities is something that is exclusive to the UHD2 models and is not available for the ultras or the UHDs. So you're gonna be able to run a live scope transducer to a UHD2 unit and wirelessly communicate that information to the second UHD2 unit in the network. This is gonna keep you from having to buy the GMS-10 network expander, which retails for $270. So you are spending a little bit more money on the UHD2 model over the UHD, but understand you are saving quite a bit of money. You have a lot of value in that networking capability as well as the updated mapping package and not to mention the higher screen resolution. For $100, you get the GT56. I think that is a steal because if you try to buy that transducer later on down the line, it's gonna cost you $475. So take that into account when you're looking at the UHD model. But if you get that UHD2 model with the GT56, you're gonna be money ahead and you're getting a much more bang for your buck. The higher resolution screen is gonna be comparable to the next option I wanna talk about, and that's the 1022. This is a GPS map unit. This is not an echo map, so the GPS map units are really kind of geared more towards their saltwater anglers, and it's gonna give you some benefits over the UHD model and even over the UHD too. So the screen resolution on the 1022 is gonna be 1024 by 600. That was the big reason you saw guys go into the 1022, but now you have that UHD2 model, so those two units are gonna have the exact same screen resolution, but the 1022 is gonna be a good bit better than the UHD model with that 800 by 480 pixels. Now this is a non-touch unit. Some of you may be thinking that is a downside, but I've gotten a lot of feedback from people loving the non-touch display on this unit. Whether they're ice fishermen or whether they're just used to operating non-touch units in the past, this is a great option. 
you know, the one big thing that I think steers people towards this is the ease of adjustment on live scope. And that's what you see people using this unit for primarily is just a dedicated live scope unit. You've got that volume knob style adjustment. You can actually click that volume knob and change the function of that button. So you can toggle in between forward range, down range, and gain. And these are going to be the three most used adjustments when you're running your live scope transducer. So a lot of people find this really simple. You don't have to worry about the touchscreen malfunctioning. You don't have to worry about, you know, your big fat fingers hitting the wrong thing. You don't have to worry about, you know, wet conditions where it's going to be a little bit more difficult to operate that touchscreen. This is a great live scope unit. You can use this unit to receive information from other GPS map units. So if you have a boat full of GPS map units, this is going to be a unit that can receive side imaging and down imaging. If you have a map card, you're going to be able to share that map card up to this unit. The 1022 does not come preloaded with any mapping. It's just got their standard base map. If this is going to be the only Garmin unit on your boat and you just want it for running live scope, I think the 1022 is a great option. At a 10 inch display, you're getting that 1024 by 600 pixels. You do have the ability to put a map card in there if you want to use it for that. You can run the Lakeview G3 mapping package or you can even run their latest and greatest Navionics Vision Plus map card. So you're not really limited in what this unit can do as far as mapping goes. It just doesn't come with it pre loaded. And again, if you're running a GPS map unit, you could be running an 8600 series unit with the GT56, and this unit will receive the information from that unit. It just does not have a sonar port for you to plug a transducer into the back of it. LiveScope will work on this unit because it has two Ethernet ports, and you're going to be able to run LiveScope into one of those Ethernet ports, and the GLS-10 module is doing all of the processing for that LiveScope transducer. That's kind of why you can run LiveScope on this unit and not down or side imaging. Now they do make a 1042 option and typically you're going to see that with the XSV designation on the back of it. XSV means that it has a sonar capability. So if you see that on a GPS map unit, that means it is sonar capable. However, if you get a 1022 or 1042 XSV, that unit is not capable of running the UHD technology. So you can run up to like a GT52, but don't waste your time trying to run the GT54 or the GT56. Another reason why I really recommend that this is kind of just a standalone live scope unit in most cases. Now, the 1042, the four in that number, would indicate that it has the preloaded mapping, it has the Lakeview G3, as well as their blue chart. So the 1022 just has their standard base map. The 1042 has the preloaded mapping. So if you find a good deal on the 1042, or maybe you just want the preloaded mapping, then that's kind of the way that you should go. Really no other differences between those two units. The XSV means you have sonar, and then the four would indicate that it has the mapping. So the 1022 is capable of running the LVS32, the original LiveScope transducer, as well as the LiveScope Plus, the GT34. Just understand whether you're running the 93 or the 1022, you got to have that black box. So there are three great options that we've gone over in this video. The 93SV UHD with the GT54. You can get that on sale right now for like 700 bucks. If that sale is still going on at the time of this video, I would definitely recommend going that route to get in at a budget friendly price. And you can always build off of that network later on down the line. But if you're looking at getting a little bit higher screen resolution and you want to stick with that Echo Map series, then I would highly recommend the UHD2. Not only do you get the wireless networking capabilities, you also get the higher screen resolution and the locking cradle. So if you're running Echo Maps, that UHD2 model would be a great fit to your network. But if you're looking at a standalone live scope unit and you don't really care to have it networking with anything else on the boat, or maybe you have a boat full of GPS maps, the 1022 is a great option. It's a non-touch display that's going to give you a high resolution return on your live scope or your live scope plus. And you're going to have access to that active captain helm feature. So just a quick recap, guys. I definitely want to reiterate that these are three great options if you're looking to add a Garmin unit to your boat, whether you're using it for mapping, down imaging, and side imaging, 
or LiveScope. These are gonna be three great options for you. A lot of it's definitely gonna come down to budget, but hopefully you guys have a better understanding of what these units are capable of and where one might outweigh the other. So guys, if you have any questions at all, make sure you put them down in the comment section below and I'll be sure to get back with you. And I appreciate you guys for tuning in. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't already and we'll see you on the next one.